uh, for uh, uh, for a hypothetical game. This isn't a specific game. People could ask me, when is this thing going to come out? And I'm like, well, it's actually just an engine a test um, that we were doing. So it's not any specific game. Uh, one thing I'd like to point out is uh, this is a, a this star carrier actually has how many turrets is it? It's like 50 moving turrets that are all tracking independently, and it has nothing to shoot at just yet. But every single uh, part of that, every single turret you're seeing, including the barrels, are all tracking independently. That is a very complicated question. <laughs> um, because, actually, I can talk a little bit about this now. Uh, the question was, uh, how, how, many, uh, or how many vertices, or what's the triangle count on those? And I said, it's a very complicated question, because our render is not a, um, we don't render or shade uh, triangles. We actually shade individual sample points. And we rasterize after we do that. This is much more similar to how, uh, say, RenderMan does it. And so we we shade. And one of the really cool things we can do is once we shade the object, we can actually re-render it many times to do things like motion blur. So one of the things that we are able to do is I think our virtual frame rate is is like 300. I don't know. Tim Tim set set it up, but it's like 350 or 400 uh, uh, frames a second. I've got a couple of timers up there, and I want to just. Uh, I kind of show you that's the current batch count. Um, now, one thing to keep in mind in a modern engine is that it, one batch does not equal one uh, model. Most things that get rendered have multiple passes and whole sorts of things that are happening. Uh, the time on the left is the total time between, um, it's actually between the fences of the GPU. So it's between when we, we ask the GPU, hey, are you done yet? And then submit the other thing. So that's the total frame time, what you're traditionally. The submit time is actually the time that we're spending inside Mantle. And, and these are in milliseconds. And the final time on the right is the frame to frame time, which is the time we're isolating when we're not waiting for the GPU. So the, if we had an infinitely fast GPU, the, the time on the right would be our, our milliseconds. So right now, I, I don't know what the math is on five, uh, what is that, 200 frames a second or something? I'm not sure. So uh, theoretically right now, we're hitting, it'll get warmed up a little bit here. Um, if we weren't GPU bound, we would be doing something like 300 things. Now we haven't optimized our GPU at all. We put this all together on the CPU, and uh, and our artist just checked stuff in. So we're we haven't even really looked at GPU performance yet. So the the most fair number to look at is probably the one on the right. Uh, one thing I'd point out too is there you can see that ship. Zoom into the carrier that's going off. It's there you go. Um, that ship's going off. We're, we're actually spawning thousands of lights in the scene, too. Every single weapon uh, impact and every single thing is actually a physical light in the scene. So we can end up in situations, which makes me grumpy sometimes when the gameplay guys put in you know, 10,000 lights in the scene. But uh, we can't handle it. And so there you're seeing lots of lights being spawned. I don't have anything else to say. I think, Tim, you should say something. Can we switch over to Tim before he protests? <laughs> Oh, OK. Well, I'll, I'll drive then. My voice is getting dry, so I'm like running out of stuff. I can, I can give Dan a break here for a second. So uh, anyway, so there's a couple other important things we wanted to make sure about this demo, because we didn't want this to just sort of be a, a sort of abstract graphics test, et cetera, et cetera. As Dan points out, this is, a, this is an internal test that we use to test the entire engine out. So currently, what we're winding up doing is um, each one of these spaceships on the screen is their own independent entity. They've got their own firing solution. They've got their own AI system. They're doing coordinated flocking, not only within their own squadrons, but within their squadron groups itself. Um, each one of the shots, which is, it's kind of funny what happens once you start giving uh, gameplay and AI, AI guys lots of, lots of perf to do stuff. They start doing really crazy things that you wouldn't expect, like each one of those little bullets, uh, the gameplay guys decided that those should all be unique and independent. And, uh, 
I really couldn't complain too much because when I started profiling it, it all, it all kind of fit through and, and worked. So um, I, I really didn't have too much of a leg to stand on. Uh, the other interesting thing that I think is, is really fun about this is that the entire thing is really uh, dynamic and natural, which is uh, a really important sort of test for us. So I think we're up to now well, just around 2,000 units. The, every run is a little bit different just in terms of uh, testing because one of the sides, you know, will always get the upper hand at some point and we wind up uh, winning or losing based on that. Um, each one of the missiles, they're independent missiles, the carrier down here um, that we've got up is a uh, is a fantastic model that just got in. That has over 200 uh, independent missile turrets that uh, everyone's been lovingly trying to get to fire off. The uh, other, the other carrier, the one that looks more like a long green tube, has you know 30 different turrets, all of which have uh, gameplay constraints, and they're targeting, their, they're putting up their own uh, targeting solutions for all that. Uh, let's see, the, the effect system all sort of runs independently, so there's not one sort of meta object for each of those, so the trails are all independent, which means that even though we're probably only doing about 3,000 uh, units right now, the uh, number of supporting objects in, in terms of uh, effects and things that are going off in the gameplay world is, is about an order of magnitude more than that. So, you know, in reality, we've got around, uh, uh, let's see, if we're up to 2,000, probably around 20. 25,000 uh, discrete objects that we're currently working on simulating and, and putting together and doing everything else. You can see sort of the missiles flying up there and, and missiles flying below there. And uh, I think the other thing that's kind of interesting is that, uh, let's see, so there's LOD. All the objects have LOD. That was a really important thing. Uh, and actually, one of the things that Mantle made, made this much easier, easier at is that once we start talking about techniques for reducing batch count, one of the things that you lose is sort of discrete primitives. So being able to sort of uh, just say, sure, we'll use as many LODs as we need to, we've actually been able to start taking the uh, artwork and optimizing it more and more. So uh, we still have a lot of GPU optimization to go. I, th I think we're talking about we, uh, we expect to get a, well, our goal is to hit 100,000 batches. I think we can do it. Uh, let's see, and if you look at our frame time now, even at, uh, do I sum those two, Dan? Six milliseconds and two milliseconds? Okay. So yeah, so we're at six milliseconds for just those 2,000 units and 20 to 30,000 batches, which um, has been a fantastic result for us. Um, well, I'll tell you what, you know what? Do we want to break, do we want to actually break format a little bit? Uh, I'm willing to, if anyone has any questions quickly, we could actually answer them while this is going off, and then we can finish up the rest of the slides. What's the CPU utilization right now? Uh, let's see, what is the C, okay, actually, you know what? That's great. I have a slide farther on down the line in Mantle for that. Um, so I'll show you, I'll show you an example. There, there'll be two slides further on. One is an example, uh, four core with uh, 50,000 batches, and others an example with uh, uh, a, a six core, 12 thread uh, machine at 80,000 batches. Uh, how, do you, how do you debug 60,000 batches? <laughs> yeah, how do you debug 60,000 batches? There's a, uh, you know, it's really interesting. So we've been talking a lot about, um, it's, uh, we're a lot more scalable than we were expecting. When we designed the engine, we put it together, there was a lot of theory, but we really had to work it out and put it together. Um, and because of the way that we wind up being so asynchronous, when I talked about that sort of swarm model, what really happens is that because we can do a lot of very small tasks, things go all over the place. Uh, and one of the things that we're actually doing is looking at a, a way of actually recording the call stacks and, and tying everything back together is an easier way to do it. Uh, interestingly enough, to get that sort of really multi-threaded utilization out of what you do, you wind up doing a lot more uh, message passing. And when you do that, you actually have a lot of context data right at the point where it breaks, so. Um, switch uh, back to the slides, and let's let this run and just see what happens. I just like I just like letting it run, especially once we get closer to ten thousand units. It's really it's really quite fun for us. Um, let's see. Any other? What, what hardware are you running on? Uh, this is a this is an FX eighty three fifty, and a Hawaii board right now. Um, I'm trying to, let me, let me see if I can understand the question again. What was it? Yes. Well, I suppose that depends on how you implement a multiplayer game, right? Uh, so you, you're right. If we were going to try and, and synchronize every, uh, every bullet, every ship on screen, then certainly there would be, there would be huge problems there. 
So uh, yes, if you, wanted to, if you wanted to do a very naive implementation of multiplayer on this, it would be very difficult to synchronize. How would you do that? Hmm? <laughs> um, I can't talk about that. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> uh, but, but I think we all know that naive is not going to work in this case. Um, but I think we can all imagine that there are alternative methods uh, that allow you to uh, uh, aggregate some of that information. Uh, what's our time like? Okay. Oh, sure.